All right, today is April the 16th, 2016, and we're watching the uh, infrared loop here for the western U.S. And today we can see that uh, we have very strong high pressure that's uh, building in over uh, Southern California and the entire uh, southwest. And the center of that high pressure, if you look at this arc here and we just draw an imaginary circle, is pretty much right, right here, right over Southern California. And that's interesting. Uh, we do have those radomes off of the Channel Islands. We've got uh, San Pedro has a radome. Pillar Point up here has a big radome. These big flat panel uh, phased array transmitters. And uh, they could be uh, transmitting in the microwave band, which would uh, heat the water vapor, generate high pressure. Uh, also, this could be uh, occurring from uh, satellites as well. It's not exactly clear exactly how this is how it's being done, but uh, we can see that the timing of what's going on here uh, is uh, uncanny. Uh, the uh, the effort to stop the moisture moving into into uh, California, we can see that the jet stream right here is is uh, well we can't see it in this view, but it is diving down and moving right through a uh, portion of eastern California. And uh, this moisture field should be wrapping around and following that pattern, but because of all the high pressure here, we are uh, very, very dry. In fact, right now, at almost 4.30 in the afternoon, we have a 9% relative humidity right now in the foothills. We have a temperature of 77 degrees, and the dew point is 18 degrees. Some of the other areas uh, I wanted to read off, uh, Coastal towns, uh, for instance, uh, La Jolla, California, 6% relative humidity right now, 83 degrees. Santa Barbara, 16% relative humidity, 75 degrees. Uh, Newport Beach, 12% relative humidity. Newport's right on the water, 12% humidity, 79 degrees. Uh, San Pedro, California, 9% relative humidity, the same as the foothills area. 81 degrees is the temperature down there in San Pedro. Uh, Malibu, 18% relative humidity, temperature is 76 degrees, and then uh, Las Vegas, 12% humidity, 73 degrees, Sacramento has 26% humidity with 79 degrees, San Francisco, 44% uh, relative humidity, 78 degrees, uh, Big Sur, 35% uh, relative humi uh, humidity, this is a uh, Big Sur is right on the coast, 62 degrees. Uh, Lake Tahoe, 22% relative humidity, 57 degrees. And Monterey, coastal town, 27% uh, and 72% uh, relative humidity. And Monterey used to be the uh, capital of California. That was the first capital for Sacramento. All right, uh, so we're watching the, uh, the infrared loop. We see that uh, very dry conditions, all this purple here. Is very, very dry, as indicated by the scale down here on the lower left, is the very driest. And that's what we're seeing here right over uh, Southern California and Mexico, Baja, and uh, Nevada, parts of Nevada and Northern California. Now we have, a, uh, we have a system here that's been parked for about a day and a half. This is spinning. It's a storm system. It's been dropping uh, snow in different uh, places in Colorado. And uh, that's been parked there. And if we look at the uh, East Coast, I think we can understand why that has been parked. Let's go take a look at the East Coast. And we can see here in the water vapor loop that we have a very large system out here in the Atlantic. This is a gigantic uh, vortex, uh, hurricane-sized uh, low pressure system right here. And uh, we can see that also that we've got clockwise rotation developing, high pressure starting to build in. We have a, a channel of dry air. This is high pressure. This has been built in with a radar. Phased array radar. These uh, transmitters are very, uh, very directional. They can uh, point these things and, and, and uh, cut paths in moisture fields like what we're seeing right here. And that is preventing this system's moisture field from wrapping around and feeding that uh, vortex. So they've got this all separated. That's uh, by design, that's done intentionally. And the reason is they don't want these two to, uh, they don't want this moving to the east and getting. Uh, mixed with this system here. That would be uh, problematic, it caused a lot of problems, a lot of flooding. And we'll have to see what develops. All right, let's go back to the uh, west coast. 
and we can see that the northeast Pacific water vapor loop, we've got that here. We've got an area of uh, low pressure, 1,008 millibar. This is moving to the, uh, to the uh, east. We have the jet stream flow, which is being cut off here. There's a transmitter right here applying some heat. We can see that in the dark area. And then, of course, over Southern California, we've got a high pressure parked right here, right next to this system, which is parked. And we have strong winds out of the uh, north. So we have a lot of wind today and last night, yeah, all day yesterday. And then high pressure is uh, uh, preventing all of this uh, from moving up and uh, giving us cooler weather as well. So there's a huge area of, of high pressure all through this area. All right, let's take a look at this in the uh, infrared loop. We can see the effect that high has had. It's just cutting everything off. This is very dry. All right, let's look at the jet stream here. We can see that there's an area diving down uh, through uh, Idaho, Montana, and uh, Nevada, right into uh, Southern California, part of Central and Southern California. And then it's wrapping around that low pressure system. But all that moisture has been cut off, so we're not getting any. Uh, we, we, we do have low pressure here today. Uh, right now it's about 29.97 uh, or 1,014 millibar. So we do have some low pressure, and there's also a trough indicated that's running right down the coast of California and into uh, Baja. We'll take a look at that as well. Okay. This is the western U.S. map. We can see the uh, weather up close. This has been parked here for about a day and a half. And so uh, they've got high pressure here. They don't want this moving back in our direction. That would, might give us rain. Now, uh, because it is very uh, dry today, and also the sun is very intense, I was out in the sun for about 15 minutes, and I was feeling like I was getting a burn. I had been out in the sun for a few months. But today was a nice day. But within you know 10 15 minutes you can feel your skin starting to burn that's because of the you know the very clear dry weather now if the solar solar radiation uh, management program was uh, based on these uh, very intense days of uh, sunlight and very dry conditions we would expect to see the uh, planes spraying chemtrails but there are zero chemtrails anywhere uh, this morning I did see uh, some uh, some uh, evidence of of chemtrail haze blowing in uh, off of the ocean. The air spraying out here, we can see some of that actually in the uh, satellite here in the last couple of frames, we can see a, a trail right there. So there was uh, some stuff that was blowing in on the breeze, but as far as seeing planes uh, actively spraying over the uh, region where we are, I, I didn't see any of that today. The point is, is that the solar radiation management uh, SRM argument if it was true and, and, and all that, uh, we would expect to see the planes out on days like this where the sun is very intense, where they're uh, maintaining high pressure to block or stall a storm. But that isn't the case. So we have to question why that is, why they're not doing that on a regular basis. The only time we see the aerosols is, is, is over here in the moisture field to dry out uh, the moisture field out here. It's uh, the, the chemtrails are associated with incoming moisture fields and, and, and all that. They're not really associated with a dry, clear weather where we have high pressure. All right, um, <clears throat> let's look at the, uh, the infrared loop. We can see the, uh, the outflow here. If we draw a, an imaginary circle using this arc, you can also see that outflow there. If we just draw a circle uh, around imaginary imaginary circle right here we can see that it's the center of that is right Southern California area all right I think I may have mentioned that all right here's the uh, surface analysis map and you know, we can see that we've got high pressure right out here in the Central Pacific that is going to separate these two systems uh, from getting together we've got a 973 millibar storm out over here that is uh, moving to the uh, northeast we've got this system here moving to the uh, east, and then we have a, a high which is moving to the east, and then we have a we have a trough indicated right up and down the coast of uh, California, right near Oregon, all the way down into uh, Baja. 
So we have some uh, interesting uh, pressure returns right here. These isobars are showing some somewhat low pressure, lower pressure than, than, than right here. So this is interesting. We do have a, a chance, I suppose, of rain if, if we could get a, something down on the back side of this high. That would be nice, but I think that uh, they're going to jockey this high and prevent any of this weather from moving in and coming down around from the back side. All right, here's the uh, <clears throat> the wave analysis. We can see uh, 15, 9, 12, and 15 foot seas moving towards the west coast generated by that uh, North Pacific uh, system. And we have 11 foot seas right off of uh, Mexico and uh, Southern California. Here's the sea level pressure. Uh, we can see these isobars are dipping and we've got different areas of high and low pressure. That's because we've got a, a storm system out here. We have a low indicated right over Texas, New Mexico border at the uh, surface level. All right, let's look at the uh, 500 millibar. We have a high pressure system right here, right next to a low, and that's why we're getting these winds out of the north, strong winds all through uh, California, Southern California. Jet streams moving right down through here as well. All right, uh, here is the uh, 300 millibar. We have that low shown, upper level. And that is pretty much stationary because of the uh, other storm out over the uh, Atlantic. We'll take another look at that. That is a gigantic system. And so I, I believe that's why this is being stalled in place until they can uh, beat this up. They've got a transmitter out here uh, on the core. We can see that this uh, core is all elongated. It's a big oval. It should be a nice, tight spiral. It's not too clean looking. We have, uh, it looks somewhat uh, disorganized. And as time goes by, we're going to watch this uh, continue to uh, fall apart. It'll weaken the pressure in it. But in the meantime, they have to uh, maintain separation. That's what they're doing here. And with all of this going on, this is an artificial man-made high pressure to uh, keep this guy over here blocked from moving out to the uh, east. All right, well, that's it. That's the uh, summary for today. And uh, we will go ahead and do another update tomorrow. Okay, that's it.